Whether you're struggling with a specific character design or drawing, or you've just been feeling a general lack of pizzazz in your work recently, here are four tips for reviving your character design process. Before we get started, next week starts the month of July, and as you've seen in the last little bit, we've been making some changes and upgrades to the way that we do things. For July, we're going to explore videos all related to a theme. So for July, it's Shopkeeper Month. So stick around at the end of the video for a sneak peek at what that looks like. So for number one, there's a bit of a difference between all of your characters sharing similarities because it's your style and a certain amount of sameness from being in a rut. And there can be a few different reasons for why this happens too. If you're a newer artist, you might be clinging really tightly to the only process or formula that you really know to generate a character concept. But if you're more experienced or you've been doing this for a while, you may just be stuck working to your strengths with what you know works. Both involve a measure of safety, and there's a few things that can help. First of all, it may help to change up your sources of influence. If you've been pulling on the same catalog of inspiration or emulating certain stylistic choices from your favorite artists, it may be worthwhile to drift into more uncharted waters. I know that for me, sometimes the gears start to grind because logically, things have to be done a certain way, or designs need to make sense from this perspective. That's why it was really nice to revisit something like this Blubford design, and chip away the preconceived notions that I had when first making them. That quickly became rules that I didn't question again for a long time. The long gap in time from initially creating the character until now gave me plenty of clarity on what was arbitrary and what would benefit and improve the design going forward. For number two, if you aren't under a particular time constraint with a character, which may not always be the case, there's nothing wrong with a little more time in the oven, either allowing some time to go by before revisiting the character or simply taking another pass to refine things. Sort of like taking the dough out of the oven uh, and, and re-kneading it. And, and then putting it back in the oven while it's while it's baking and that makes it that makes it better somehow my analogies they're all but depleted i can't hold on much longer one well documented case on this channel is the process of zonette who just wasn't clicking iteration after iteration it ended up being tremendously helpful to push the shapes into territory that was outside of my comfort zone kind of like the first tip it ended up being a design I was excited about thematically, but also because there's elements that are really unique from other designs that I've done before. And when your roster starts to get as big as mine, that novelty becomes a commodity. Another good reason why we all need to continue growing and learning. In the case of this character, Avic, who I really only did one official pass on, the progress that I've made recently mainly focuses on refining that design, clarifying and making him easier to understand, and pushing the personality into something more vibrant and relatable. So far, I really like where that's going. For number three, an exercise that might help you if you find yourself caught up in details or are simply having trouble finding appealing shapes is to try and create the simplest looking version of a character that you can. Uh, somewhat randomly, a quick little piece of fan art that I did last year is one that I accidentally really like, and there's nothing really spectacular compared to the more illustrative projects that I've done, but, and Nick, if you're watching, cover your eyes and ears real quick. This is just a couple of Bionicle characters that are originally very bulky, sharp, complicated and blocky characters. I mean, they are built up of a lot of moving Lego parts. This exercise has you streamlining those shapes, finding bits of unity in a design, and it's where you start to stumble into my personal definition of appeal, which among other things has to do with solving multiple problems with one solution, having through lines that flow throughout a design. What this happened to end up as is something like a simplified, limited animation style, and it really forces you to find the essence of a character and boil away the things that are unnecessary, as well as representing complicated things with abstract and simple ideas. This, of course, had me working from existing characters that weren't mine, but it's the same process to do so with your own. Maybe try with an existing character design that you just don't really jive with. How would your spin on it end up benefiting the design? It's a great exercise to work through if you do it without ill intent. For number four, another difficulty or place where you might get stuck, if you're anything like me, is in not having a good enough reason to be creating something, if that makes any sense. I've found that especially as I get older and gain more experience in art, a little like we talked about last week, it's not just about creating as much as you can because you can, but in finding more meaning and accomplishing different things, really taking on new challenges, usually in the earlier stages of our art careers, just the challenges to get a lot of work out. Kind of done that. It's generally difficult or a bit of a chore for me to just sit down and make a bat character for social media. 
I'd much rather have the purpose, a larger context, and a strong idea of who the character is supposed to be, at least to start with. It's a lot like an actor asking, what's my motivation, and figuring out what their character is thinking and feeling, which is also good character design advice on its own. If your character just exists in an endless void, they have little to no chance of gaining motivation or context. It then becomes more difficult for that character to be inherently interesting, which lowers my desire to want to work on them. Even if the purpose is a small context you have in your head, having a purpose for what you're making only strengthens the result, and in some cases, they're getting made in the first place. If you have nothing to go off of though, you don't necessarily need a grandiose comic or game or animation project to slot this character into. Just try to tell a simple story with them. Add a second character and explore their dynamic within your drawing. It doesn't have to get overthought. So as I mentioned, next week is the start of Shopkeeper Month, and depending on how that goes, we might start exploring themed months more going forward. And of course, the roots of these videos will still always be about visual storytelling, artistic mindset, and character design. Now, because I have long-term projects that I work on, it's been really helpful to plan out multiple videos that center around a certain theme. Now, work from one week can compound to help the work for next week instead of completely starting over, who'd have thought? And we'll see if on your end, that helps you feel like coming back more week after week. I'll talk about this more next week, but I love the character archetype of the shopkeeper. In games and animation, we'll explore some character concepts for shopkeepers, but also talk a little bit about things like being a shopkeeper yourself, selling your work as an artist and things like that. There might be the spare interview or video that doesn't fit the theme, but overall, that's what we're hoping to stick to. And if this goes well, we have some big ideas for where themed months can go in the future. This also helps me to tease next Sunday's video every week, like this. Next week, we're designing and illustrating an old concept and fleshing out the personality of a shopkeeper selling two completely different kinds of wares. I do love to joke about comments and how any old comment will indeed help the video out. And so if you can do that, that'd be lovely. But I'd love to hear from you this week since we're on the subject. What is it that you're struggling with when it comes to art and character design? What's what's the vibe out there? What, what are you going through? You can get Bigo's Backpack, which is a new foil trading card and hard enamel pin in your mailbox every month over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. It's at a new lower price and will be these two collectible items going forward. You can get my course Learn Character Design over on learncharacterdesign.com. It's a comprehensive character design curriculum over 18 hours of video learning. You can follow me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Thanks so much for watching and have fun creating.